In the fight against climate change, we often hear about the power of renewables, energy efficiency, or forest conservation. While these are major pieces of the climate puzzle, they are simply not enough. We need to look at areas with untapped potential to decrease our carbon emissions even further. It turns out, materials can be one of these areas. Within two decades, global greenhouse gas emissions from the production of materials has more than doubled from 5 gigatons in 1995 to more than 11.5 gigatons in 2015. This is as much as the emissions from agriculture, deforestation, and land use change combined. The most carbon intensive materials are iron and steel, cement and lime, plastics and rubber, as well as wood. 80% of material emissions come from construction and manufactured goods like our homes and cars. According to the latest work of the International Resource Panel, if G7 countries apply a number of material efficiency strategies, GHG emissions from the production of materials for homes could decrease by 80% in 2050. Emissions from the production of materials for cars could decrease by 57%. And all of this can be done with the technology we have available today. Material efficiency brings multiple benefits. It can help reduce GHG emissions from the production of materials, and it can also help decrease energy use in the operation of vehicles and homes. In G7 countries, the construction, operation, and demolition of homes would produce 43 gigatons of GHG emissions from 2016 to 2060, even with ambitious energy efficiency measures. If we apply material efficiency strategies on top of these measures, we could cut down 8 gigatons of life cycle emissions in that period. For cars, these emissions could be brought down by 11 gigatons. For buildings, the most impactful strategies are more intensive use of homes, for example, lower demand for floor space, designing buildings that use less materials, using sustainably harvested timber, and improving recycling rates of construction material. For cars, the largest reductions of emissions could be achieved by changing patterns of vehicle use through ride sharing and car sharing, as well as shifting towards more trip appropriate smaller vehicles. In order to fully capture the benefits of material efficiency, policy action is needed. Current material-related policies mainly focus on landfill diversion and mass rather than life cycle GHG reductions. The design of houses and vehicles determines how much material they will use, how much energy they will consume throughout their life cycle, how long they will last, and how easy it will be to reuse and recycle their components. This offers a great entry point for policymakers who could use instruments like building standards and codes to influence the design. In addition to the choice and use of materials, consumer preference and behavior also play an important role in bringing down our emissions. For example, shared and smaller housing can be encouraged through changes in regulation and taxation, but they require changes in behavior and lifestyle. Another potential policy path to boost emission reductions could be to integrate material efficiency into the existing nationally determined contributions of the Paris Agreement. Some countries have taken the lead in this direction, showing us that it is indeed possible. Learn more about the potential of materials for climate action through the IRP report, Resource Efficiency and Climate Change, Material Efficiency Strategies for a Low Carbon Future. Available at www.resourcepanel.org reports.